How many ghost stories do you know? Have you actually worked out the pattern in all these stories? If you like me, you've probably bought many ghost stories, many books with ghost stories, trying to figure out the elements that make these ghosts different from other ghosts. But you might have found or you might have felt that there's information missing. So this information um, can help us actually to work out some kind of classification on ghosts, which is what I've been trying to do since the beginning of our series on the ghosts. And I think I've come across to the conclusion that to help you and to help myself to figure out this classification, we need some very basic elements. So on the one hand, what we need is to realize uh, that the country or the countries of origin and cross the influences are very important to classify the ghosts. But also the historical moment when the ghosts first appear, it's a basic piece of information. Not only that, how they have evolved over time is something that is going to give us a lot of information about this classification and also which ones have made it to, into literature. So as you can see, these four elements can actually fit into basic concepts, folklore and urban legends. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see the differences between folklore and urban legends to actually make sure that we cover all those four areas I've just mentioned to be able to then classify how many types of ghosts there are. By analyzing the folklore and urban legends, we're going to see very clear the type of ghosts that we have in front of us and how to classify them. So if you're ready for this journey, if you're ready for this video, this information is going to blow your mind. Again, as always, pen and paper, and let's start with the lesson today. Hello Gothic friend, this is Alice and you are in Gothic land and welcome to episode number 9 of our section The Ghost is a Metaphor that Shapes Your Identity and today I want to talk to you about the importance of folklore and urban legends when classifying different ghosts. Why I think that is important? I think it's important that we do this initial setting some foundations uh, because if no when we come across the classification that you're gonna see that it's almost impossible and I don't think that and, and I don't think that anybody has done this job yet you're gonna realize that without this information it's gonna be very difficult it's gonna be a very hard job uh, to actually do this classification and as I'm gonna give you all the descriptions the definitions and the resources you're gonna realize why this is so but before we go into the episode remember that you have always always like you some free information so what you have here is a free downloadable that will actually help you with your journey so what you have here is a pdf uh, called critical thinking and the analysis of your expectations with this product with this pdf what i do is i help you through being charged of all the areas of your life while building your project and that project doesn't matter if it's actually a life project, is uh, because you just want to learn more about the Gothic, or if it's because you're going to start setting your own business and you have a lot of dark spaces that you're not really very sure about it. Um, and what I do is actually help you. If you go to gothicalice.com, you can download this document that takes you through asking by asking you critical thinking questions I take you through all those pain points of your life and I'm not just talking about your life in general but the different areas in your life because projects actually are made up of different parts and we cannot neglect them because by neglecting those parts you're neglecting actually your project and your needs and yourself so 
In today's episode, I want to take you through these uh, versus 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 something else, yeah, folklore versus uh, urban legends, because when I was talking about ghosts in the past in another video, and this was last year back, going back last year, I did this program on Supernatural with my sister, and it's a program is here in the channel if you want to have a look. It's called Hablando con la Cis uh, about Supernatural is in part two we were actually starting to classify all the creatures that appear in the series and one of the creatures one of these characters were actually ghosts and by analyzing and trying to bring to this chat uh, to bring some clarity about the different types of ghosts that appear in the series we realized a lot of things we realized that actually uh, the the folklore and the urban legend is so important in this series and then when you think about it this is important not just in this series in the supernatural series but it's actually important in any series in any story of the ghost so at that time i was already starting to uh, work on this list of ghosts but it's a very very long journey but what we're going to do today is actually going by going into the definitions you're going to figure out you're going to see the important elements you're going to see the relevance of doing this job this way and you're going to realize that probably nobody has done this before not the way that i'm going to tell you uh, i'm going to talk to you about and as always the important things and the important activity to do is first look at the definitions so why don't we start with folklore Let's go. This is a bit of a session. Um, today is a bit like a class. So how do we describe folklore and what is it made of? So for folklore, we have that it's a word made of two parts. On the one hand, we have folk, meaning people and race. And then we have the word lore, which means teaching, doctrine and learning. And this is something that you can find in the Oxford Dictionary English etymology and it's essentially etymology which is this one that I always make reference to okay so the Oxford Dictionary of English etymology right but not only that if we continue reading we have the following we have that if you go to a www.sciencedirect.com in that page they tell you that this term was first coined by the antiquarian and writer William John Toms in 1846 and there is a very interesting fact here and is that he was a follower of the Brothers Grimm. So this is very important information because you already seen there that we have the influence of Victorian times then we have the Grimm brothers who actually created a lot of stories that were not as nice as what we have nowadays. In fact the original fairy tales were very very cruel but this is a very important piece of information for what we're going to be talking about today. If we keep reading on the description of Wikipedia, and I went to Wikipedia today because uh, in this sense, it's the one place that has a lot of very useful information that if you cross check it and then you try to figure out the original sources, it's accurate. So what I have done is I've taken the main part, the main information. Some of it is a little bit adapted to not have repetitions, but this is super important what wikipedia says in this in in this part in this moment that i want to read to you now so what do we have is that folklore is a body and i, I have highlighted the main words here for you to draw your attention there so it's it's a body of culture shared by a particular group of people it encompasses the traditions common to that culture subculture or group this includes oral traditions such as tales, legends, proverbs and jokes. They also include material culture ranging from traditional building styles to handmade toys common to the group. Folklore also includes customary lore, taking actions for folk beliefs, the forms and rituals of celebrations such as Christmas and weddings, folk dances and in initiation to rites. Imagine, if you've been paying attention, all the vocabulary that is so key in this slide. 
I mean, we could just go and start analyzing and looking for the original definition and the etym et etymological origin of each of these words, which even though I'm very tempted, I'm not going to do today because I think it will actually kill me or switch off, switch off completely. But it's very important that we have highlighted these elements because these are the elements that are going to keep appearing in our stories. They're going to keep appearing in the ghost stories and they're going to keep appearing in our uh, conversation that we're having here today. But there's more to that, to that definition. There's still more information that is crucial for words for our future classification of ghosts. And it goes like this. So folklore generally refers to cultural expressions such as narratives, more vocabulary for us, jokes, as we saw before, beliefs, proverbs, legends, myths, music, songs, dances, costumes, food and festivals through which individuals and groups shape and disseminate a shared identity. Look at the word identity. We cannot ignore identity. We have been talking about this. The ghost is a metaphor to identify, to talk about our identity. So this is crucial, you see, and it just appear in this in this description. So let's go back to the slide again. And the second part says, its interest emerged primarily out of the romantic nationalism, going back again to our time, of the early 19th century Gothic times, as you know. Enthusiastic intellectuals, amateurs, and artists started to collect different kinds of folklore material in order to be able to study various aspects of the folk and folk life. And this is actually from sciencedirect.com. So you see, there are different sources and there's a lot about folklore. There, there were a lot of people involved in folklore and investigating it. And it's super interesting to see what we're gonna read now. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about is now legend. Um, and you're gonna see how folklore and then legend and then urban legend are connected and why they're so important that we have them like in a versus kind of uh, conversation today. So how can we describe legend? So for legend, we have that, we have two interpretations or we have two different sources. The Oxford Dictionary of English um, Etymology, again, tells us that it's, it's, a legend is a story of a saint's life. So this is important. Or collection of these 14, in the 14th century. Book of liturgical lessons in the 15th century, and it was a non historical story. For us, it's very important this fact of the liturgical, um, the liturgical lessons because what we're going to figure out, we're going to see, is that uh, the monks had a very important role on the creation of ghost stories when we get to med med medieval ages, the, med the Middle Ages, in medieval times. But before we get into that, let's define the next term, which is legend. Let's continue with the second definition of legend, which goes like this. A very old story or set of stories from ancient times, or the stories, not always true, that people tell about a famous event or person. So just try to remember these, because now we're going to go into defining what is urban legend. So it's going to be complementary to this. And then you're going to realize what I have found. As you can see, urban legend is made out of two, it's an expression made out of two words. So on the one hand, we have urban, meaning pertaining to a town or city. This is PCPC. Legend is what I told you before, the story of a saint's life or collection of these from the 14th century. Book of Liturgical Lessons, the 15th century, and non-historical story. It was first used as urban belief tales. So urban legend wasn't called urban legend at the start. It was called urban belief tales. And an interesting fact about this is that it has appeared in print as urban legend only since 1968 by the American folklorist, professor and director of the Folklore Institute at Indiana University, Richard Mercer. Dawson. This is again something that you can find in Wikipedia and it's super interesting because it took that long to actually someone start investigating maybe in a way like what we're saying to do now 
about the ghost stories and how much recently the ghost story seems to be something that people keep still keep talking about but not just in from the folklore point of view or from the gothic story uh, the ghost gothic story but also there's a lot of people that are still investigating uh, appearances spirits uh, specters all these that we've been talking about in the last uh, in the last episodes too so let's see what we can find as definitions that complement these other definitions on the online website. So, for urban legend in merriamwebster.com, we can read that an urban legend is an often lurid story or anecdote that is based on hearsay and widely circulated as true. So it's not actually true. It might have been a distortion of reality. But it is kind of it goes wild, yeah. It spreads wildly, and people start believing it. And what is very interesting here is that in Wikipedia we also have that urban legend is also known as contemporary legend. So this is how we kind of started, or now is being used. I mean, I'm no more the urban legend term, but this is another one. So this is a genre of folklore comprising stories circulated as true. It doesn't mean that they are true, but they are considered true, especially as having happened to a friend of a friend or family member, often with horrifying or, or humorous elements, which is a little bit shocking, but okay, yes, we can find that as an urban legend as well. These legends can be entertaining, but often concern mysterious peril or troubling event, events such as disappearances and strange objects. There may also be confirmation of moral standards, which we have talked about in the past, reflect prejudices or be a way to make sense of societal anxieties. Most of them circulated orally, but can be spread by any media, including newspapers, mobile new apps, email and social media. Some urban legends have passed through the years with only minor changes to suit re regional variations. I mean, you have heard this before. I've talked about this in the previous episodes. If you remember, we have mentioned the fact of the orality of the ghost stories. We've talked about the past. We've talked about perception of people of different cultures in different moments in their lives. We have talked about this spectrality. We have talked about these elements already and now we have confirmation of what we have seen or what we saw before by having these definitions that we can find different of them and they complement each other online which my friend is uh, what you do uh, when you are a researcher you're using your critical thinking to analyze all the elements and to find all those dots you know to to join all the dots and to see where the information actually joins but you can see that this definition of urban legend is quite extensive. So one of the things that we can see, we can learn about this is the following, is the main elements that make an urban legend be an urban legend, which are the following. So we have mystery, horror, fear, shock or humor. They often serve as cautionary or morality tales where the characters can act in a disagreeable manner, only to wind up in trouble, hurt or dead. They will often try to invoke a feeling of disgust, I mean we are now in our gothic space, in the reader, which tends to make these stories more memorable and potent. They can include elements of the supernatural or paranormal, so obviously the urban legend is that space where the gothic is going to find itself happier with. And probably this is one of the elements that will make of the Gothic when it becomes literature that space that is not considered, um, you know, the connection with quality, not quality, this genre uh, that uses certain stories that it creates stories making them believable, but that are actually based on nonsense that they base on perceptions that they base on distortion of reality this is what we're gonna find as an argument for those who do not like the gothic but this is exactly the space this is the gray spaces where we don't just learn about the possibility of certain ghosts or certain stories being true but also how 
how much this distortion of reality tells us about our identity. And again, identity is part of the Gothic. So it's actually very interesting what we start to see here. So we have got to the point now of today's program where we have to go back and make reference to the book that everything that started everything, right? So in the medieval ghost stories, Andrew Jones actually points out something that is very interesting. And is the purpose that the ghost stories had in medieval times that have changed over time. And is the following, he says, but initially it was born to evoke a wandering response from its listeners. So that's why we have our monks. Our monks were the only ones who could actually read and write. So they were the voice of these oral stories. They started writing everything down and it became literary. So now we know exactly at what point, at least in Western cultures, where everything's I've been reading. I know that I have mentioned the in the past uh, past episode we mentioned the Babylonian tablet with images of what possibly was uh, the ghost but as in storytelling the concept of ghost story is actually what Join says says is a very very modern now if you call modern medieval times well I suppose it is modern but uh, it's true that in this first moment the medieval the medieval ghost story had this intention and over time it has turned into what we know nowadays and this is the ghost story or ghost stories that really what they intend to do is to chill the blood or entertain by freezing and this is exactly what join says in his book so all this is well and good but then my next question would be what about the origin of ghosts of other cultures or in other cultures how did they originate so i think if you you might agree with me that if we do the same exercise with the rest of the world the ghost stories are, uh, around the rest of the world compared to what we have done with um, the european or the western cultures we're going to see similar patterns we're going to see points where cultures uh, clash and they coincide and that's going to have like ha like it happens in languages when they coincide they're going to start sharing information they're going to start sharing characteristics they're going to be crossovers and this is going to make the stories a lot more complicated to classify but but at the same time very very interesting and going back to the case of supernatural when we talked about la llorona la llorona is the woman in white so we have that the same character may vary its characteristics to adapt to the different cultures, which is what we have seen through the definitions. And that's why it's so important to go and find the origin of the vocabulary that we use and to do all these connections. So we're going to have time to start our classification and no, not today, but this is a very good exercise because we've done four things. We've looked at four elements. Or well, there are four elements, you could even say there are these four elements that we can find between folklore and other legends that actually are going to help us create this list of ghosts. And these four elements are on the one hand that what we have seen at the beginning that the country or countries of origin, even they there are cultural cross, uh, cross influences across the globe. That's important to bear in mind when we do our classification, but also the historical moment where these ghosts appear and when the stories start being told and the repetitions, you know, we can then see if there are certain patterns and also at what point the stories are really invented, distorted or not. We'll see that as well. And how they have evolved over time, which is a very interesting factor. And we're going to be using literature, cinema as well, to see this evolution. And which ones obviously have made it into literature, which again is very important, very interesting. So my friend, if you have enjoyed this episode today and you have something, something to say about ghosts and from different cultures and you want to leave me your comment, I would be delighted to know because that is going to help me to continue investigating. I know I've given myself a big task and it's a challenging piece of homework, but I think it's very, very interesting, interesting everything we're going to find out. Uh, by doing it and probably together would be better than just doing it on my own so i hope you have liked that but before we go remember if you've liked the video as always please like subscribe to the channel 
uh, click on the bell, share it, comment below and follow me. But don't just follow me here, you can also support me, support my work and follow me on other platforms. What do I mean by support? If you go, if you like reading articles, I, uh, I am on Medium. Uh, I write every week there, at least once or twice. And on Medium, to support my work, you just can um, become a member. Only $5 a month to become a member on Medium. And you have access not just to me, but to a lot of other writers there. If you want to donate, then please go to my coffee page. That a little bit is a little bit abandoned at the time, but I have plans for it. But if you donate there, then what you're going to do is have access to a membership. And in there, you will have a specific content just for you. And in, on Twitter, you can follow me there. You don't have to support me there. Although you can subscribe to my newsletter and then you will get in some goodies that other people don't. On Facebook, you can find me there too, Alice in Gothic Land. And you will see there uh, everything that I do, you'll see it posted. On Instagram, I don't have much of a presence, but every so often there are some news here and there. And if this is the first time that you come and visit this channel and you come here, please uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alice, um, uh, my brand is called uh, Alice in Gothic Land and what I do as well as give you a lot of information about the Gothic is to use the elements of the Gothic to help people with their life projects. Sometimes it's because you need guidance, sometimes it's because you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you need to see it. So you know that because I'm a writer, a confidence builder and a project auditor, I help people like you with their products, their services, their presentations, class lessons, or simply because you want to learn more about the Gothic. So depending on where you are in your journey, in your life journey, just contact me. And then from this very first call, you're going to gain a lot of confidence and clarity on whatever it is that you're doing. So anyone, if you just want to talk me for, talk to me for, to have a chat and we can just talk about all things Gothic. The first call is the first, first free assessment call is that is free. And the next ones, depending on what you need, we'll talk about it. We'll find, um, a product that works for you, a service that works for you, and I'll be delighted to have you on board as well. So thank you very much, friends. Let's keep it very gothic. Let's keep thinking about ghosts, and I'll see you next week with more ghostly content. Hopefully, I will not come across any more things before we get to our list. So until then, take care and be very gothic, my friend. Bye.